I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on functions. In this video, I will discuss a test paper, Unit 2, Equivalent Algebraic Expressions. We have a couple of questions here. Let us uh, see them first in the test paper. I will make a copy of these questions and then uh, we will look into their solutions. So that was the first page with three questions. And then here we have uh, rational functions, we have to state the restrictions and simplify them. Here is an application question on finding the length of a rectangle when area and width is given. And then we have uh, another application question. And then we have very important thinking and inquiry question here. This uh, last question is actually very interesting. Let us see how to solve them one by one. So I made a copy of these questions. So these are the six questions which we are going to work on. Let's begin with the very first one, which is expand and simplify. So when you have uh, something like this, many times the question asked is, should we multiply this first or that one? What should we do first, right? That's a big question to be answered. It is a straightforward question otherwise, right? So let me copy the question first. We have this times 3x minus 4 whole square. I'll prefer you to expand this square first and then do any other multiplication. So, or you could actually multiply these and that also, right? So let's go in steps. So first step should be that you should expand this portion, which is 9x square minus 2ab means 8 times 3 is 24 plus 4 square 16. Now calculator is allowed for this test paper, right? So, so remember calculator is allowed for doing multiplication. You could actually use calculator also, right? Now let me expand this portion. So what we get here is minus 10x plus 35. And we have here 9x squared minus 24x plus 16. So now we are multiplying a binomial with trinomial. You expect six terms. So multiply one by one, right? So since it was 5 times 2, a number 10, I did this multiplication. It becomes simpler, right? So sometimes we may, you know, break our rules, right? So otherwise I would have multiplied by 5 at the end because I don't want to get into big numbers, right? So, and we'll use calculator whenever necessary. So when I multiply with minus 10x, 9x squared, we get minus sign 90x cubed, correct? Here, we get a plus sign 240x squared. And then we get negative sign 160 now we'll multiply with 35 so we'll need calculator now right so 35 times 9 gives us 315 so we get plus 315 x squared now with 24 35 times 24 is equal to 840 and the sign is negative 840 x and let's multiply 35 with 16, 560 with a positive sign, right? So now you need to combine the like terms. So we'll add one step, putting the like terms together. We have 90x cubed. As far as the square terms are concerned, we have 240x squared and plus 315x squared x terms are minus 160x and minus 840x. The constant term is 560, right? So you can now combine uh, the like terms. Let's add 240 plus 315, 555. And here we have both negatives, so they'll also add up. So 160 plus 840, 
plus 560 correct so that is what you get so that is your function expanded and simplified now let's move on to the next question we need to factor fully 49x square minus 3x minus 5 whole square so that is difference of squares as you know a square minus b square can be factored as a plus b times a minus b right so here a is what we could actually write this as 7x whole square and we already have the other term which is 3x minus 5 whole square so a is 7x b is 3x minus 5 so first we'll add them so we can now write this as 7x add this term plus 3x minus 5 times 7x take away this term so you have to change the sign right so minus 3x minus and minus becomes 5 now combine the like terms we have 10x minus 5 and here we get 4x plus 5 now factor fully don't stop here you can still take 5 common in this case right so take 5 common so you get 5 common here you get 2x minus 1 times 4x plus 5 is that clear to you now, if you miss this step, then you're going to lose uh, 0.5 marks. The second one here is 12x square minus 8x minus 15. So you need to find product and sum. So let me rewrite this question, which is 12x square minus 8x minus 15. So the numbers are kind of big numbers, right? So what we should do? We have to multiply 12 with 15 and we have a negative sign here so look into the factors right so factors of uh, 12 could be 3 and 4 factors of 15 is 3 and 5 you can also split 4 as 2 into 2 correct if that helps so you got 5 3 2 2 and 3 to work with correct and we could have uh, 3 times 3 as 9 and 9 times 2 as 18 and 5 times 2 as 10 right so if I factor this out I mean we have two numbers now as you can see 10 and 18 that combination will give us minus 8 perfect so we'll decompose minus 8x here and we'll rewrite this as 12x square minus will be a bigger number which is 18 in this case plus 10x you realize right minus 15 so that is how we could actually factor these big numbers and then get a clue of what to decompose the middle term as okay now we'll do the factoring uh, first two terms we can take 4x common uh, sorry uh, we can take uh, 2 and 3 6x common 6 times 2 is 12 so we get 2x and 6 times 3 so minus 3 in this case we can take 5 common so we'll take plus 5 common we get 2x minus 3 now 2x minus 3 is common and we get 6x plus 5 so that becomes the solution so that is how you're going to factor this now let's take the other two parts now here we have 2x square plus 4xy minus 126y square you could do a group factoring so I could factor 2 common here right so what do we get we get x square plus 2xy and half of 126 will be 63y square right. so so that becomes the first step now we have coefficient of one only we are looking for sum and product we want product of two numbers to be minus 63 and sum of two numbers to be rather y square right and sum as 2y correct so 9 times 7 is the right combination we'll take 9 positive and 7 negative 
with y so that you get y square, right? So that is how we are going to factor this. So we get two times when you factor this, we get x plus 9y times x minus 7y. Is that clear to you? So that becomes your answer. The next example here is y square minus x square minus 20x minus. So we'll have to split it into two parts. You see two x's. So we'll make a trinomial with these axes, right? So we could write this as equal to um, y square. We'll take minus common and then write all the three terms here. x square plus 20x plus 100. So we have y square minus. Now this is a perfect square, x plus 10, whole square. So we'll write this as x plus 10 whole square. Now we'll apply the difference of squares formula which we did apply earlier also. So we get y minus. So we could write, let's write first with plus terms, add these two, x plus 10 times y minus these. So change all the signs, right? Is that clear to you? So that becomes your factored form for D. So that is how you're going to fully factor that. Now we'll get into rational functions. Simplify and state restrictions. So all the rational functions will have some restrictions, right? Most of them. So restrictions are when denominator is equal to zero. So let us first simplify it. Let me rewrite it. So you get 4 minus 3x over 9x squared minus 16. Now that is a perfect square. So I can write this as 4 minus 3x over, this is 3x whole square, right? So 3x and that is 4 square, right? So plus 4 times 3x minus 4. Now see, 4 minus 3x is minus of 3x minus 4. So I can write this as minus 1 over 3x plus 4. Does it make sense to you? So that goes with minus 1. Perfect. So this is one part. Now, let's write down the restrictions. Now, whenever you write restrictions, you have to consider the factors which were not cancelled also. You have to consider both these factors. You get the idea? So, in this, the restriction here is that x is not equal to 4 over 3 with plus and minus sign. Do you see that? So you have to continue writing this restriction here that x is not equal to plus minus 4 over 3. Do not write restriction only for the simplified form, right? Otherwise, they are not equivalent rational functions. So that becomes our restriction. Is it okay? Okay, so now let's do the part B. You could also write restrictions right in the beginning in such cases. Clearly the restriction is x is not equal to 0 and x is not equal to 2, right? So we can write restriction here. Correct? And now let's simplify it. To simplify, we need to have a common denominator. So the common denominator here will be from numbers 3 and 15, both are primes, so 15, x and x squared, we get x squared, and the factor x minus 2, right? So that becomes your common denominator. Now, we will multiply this 7 by what? Of course, 5x and with x minus 2. We'll multiply this minus 2 with 3 and x minus 2. And we'll multiply this plus 4 with the other factor, which is 15x squared. Is that clear to you? Got it? Now we can expand and simplify. So, so if you do this, you get 7 times 5 is 35x. We'll multiply this with 35x. We get 35x squared minus 70 twice uh, 35 times 2, right? Minus 70. Now here, minus 6 times 
x, so minus 6x, minus 6 times minus 2 plus 12. 4 times 15 is 60 x square. So the denominator is 15 x square x minus 2. Clear? Now combine the like terms 35 and 60. So we get 95 x square. Um, the x terms we have. Uh, there was an x term here. I missed this x here. Okay. 35 times 2 with an x, correct? So that x term should have been here. Okay, so we have these two x terms, 76. So minus 76x. And the constant is 12. Correct? So, so that is what you get here. And now you could actually try and factor the numerator if possible correct so sometimes it is also possible to factor the numerator and then simplify it further that when you get to this stage you could find what is b square minus 4ac so as we could just take, uh, check b square minus 4ac so here b square will be 76 square minus 4 times 95 times 12 and that gives you a number. Let's find square root of this number. Now this square root is 8 square root 19. So therefore, we know it cannot be factored further, right? So that becomes our final answer. Does it make sense to you, right? And we have already written all our restrictions. Perfect. So that is fully factored, correct? Let's move on and take the next question now. We need to simplify and state restrictions. Now, whenever you are dividing, you have to flip, right? And that is the addition. So, we'll also follow the order of operation. We'll do division first and then addition or subtraction. Now, it's kind of important to factor them first. So, let's begin with the very first term. 6 is common. So, we can write this as equal to 6 times x minus 7. In the denominator, we have 3x plus 1, right? Now, in this case, we are dividing by x squared minus 49. So, we could, let me do it in two steps. Let's say divide, let's factor this. We get x minus 7 times x plus 7. Now, 6x squared minus 7x minus 3. 6 times 3 is 18. And we need sum as 7. So, that means 9 times 2. So let us do this factoring on the side. Okay, so, so I'll just do this on the side here. So we have 6x squared minus 7x minus 3. And 7 could be written as 9 times 2, right? I mean 9 minus 2. So this is 6x squared minus 9x plus 2x minus 3. So here we get 3x as common factor. So we get x minus 3. And here we get um, uh, 2x minus 3 and here we have 2x minus 3 as our factor so it could be factored as 2x minus 3 times 3x plus 1 is it clear to you so I've done, I've done this on the side here we can now write the factors which is 2x minus 3 times 3x plus 1 plus now here, nothing can be factored. So we'll just keep this as such. 14, 7 times 2. So we can write this as x plus 7 times x plus 2. Is it clear to you? So part of the trinomials could be factored separately. And then you could write down their uh, factored form. Correct? Well, whenever there is division, we have to write restrictions from both numerator and denominator. Let me just uh, go one more step, write it as a multiplication. So we get 6 times x minus 7 over 3x plus 1 times we have 2x minus 3 times 3x plus 1 over x minus 7 times x plus 7 plus 5x minus 3 over 
x plus 7 x plus 2 right now this is a good stage to write restrictions let me write down restrictions first so x is not equal to what so beginning from here x is not equal to minus 1 over 3 at this stage plus minus 7 the numerator also we have to consider 3 over 2 here minus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 3 is already written we need not write it here we have already considered x plus 7 we will write minus 2 so and minus 2 is it okay so these are the restrictions now let us cancel the terms which are which can be cancelled so that can be cancelled and 3x plus 1 can also be cancelled perfect so what we get here is basically 6 times 2x minus 3 over x plus 7 plus 5x minus 3 over x plus 7 times x plus 2. Now we'll write this as a common denominator which is x plus 7 times x plus 2. So we have to multiply this with x plus 2 also. So we get 6 times 2x minus 3 times x plus 2 plus 5x minus 3. All right. Now uh, let's take it on the right side. I have very less space here. So we'll just multiply and write it down. So 2x times x is 2x squared. We'll do it 6 times 2, 12. So we get 12x squared. And 6 times 3 is 18 times 2, so minus 36. With 3 when you multiply, uh, 12, 12x times 2 is 24x. And 6 times 3 is minus 18x, minus 18x. Okay. And here we have 5x minus 3 okay. and we get x plus 7 times x plus 2 so we have six terms here we multiplied 6 with these two terms so we get 12 and 18 here and then with 12x we multiplied this to get 12x squared and with uh, 18 we multiplied that uh, to get minus 36 not a good idea we should have done with first one both so 12 with 2 which we missed 24x and then with 18 with x we wrote right so we kind of compensated okay so it's actually preferred to write in order i skipped the order okay we'll just uh, shift the page and try to complete this here so what we get here combining the like terms we have only one x square terms which is 12 x square Amongst the x terms, plus 24 minus 18 is plus 6x. Constants, oh sorry, there's 5x also, so this becomes 11x. So we combine these three terms. Minus 39, minus 39 over x plus 7 times x plus 2 right so that is what you get now you may try to see if this works right so so what we will do here is uh, we can actually leave it here this cannot be factored but we'll write restrictions at the end also so once again the restrictions are x is not equal to minus 1 over 3 plus minus 7, 3 over 2, and minus 2. Okay? So that is how we are going to do question number 3. So this was the first part of the test, which is knowledge-based. Now here, i like you to note one thing, and that is to say, uh, when we get into this stage, when we have a trinomial here, uh, note, uh, in, at this stage, don't try to factor now. 
Now that will save time, okay. Uh, now important thing here is that it will save time, but there will be few times when this can be factored. So there could be a hit of 0.5 marks, right? So that's the strategy. So there is a hit of 0 0.5 if, if and only if it can be factored. Correct? So take this hit, right? So there is no harm in losing 0 0.5 rather than losing time to figure out whether this can be factored or not. It's important to understand this strategy since uh, we were at this stage twice in this test paper, once here. Do you see this? Once here. So purposely, I was trying to factor this because that is what happens. Many times students will just sit here trying to factor this and figure out that this cannot be factored, but they have wasted valuable time and that time will cost them one question. So, so take a hit of 0.5 right rather than hit of five marks by missing a question so that's the advice on this so once you get to the stage straight away write down restrictions and move on to the next question unless and until obviously you could do it right it will, if it is too simple just do it okay now let's move on and take up application questions here so we'll begin with question number four which is a rectangle has area of x to the power of 4 minus 16 and the width of x minus 2. Determine an expression for length of the rectangle. So we know that area is length times width, right? So length basically will be area divided by width, right? So in our case, we are given area as x to the power of 4 minus 16 and the width is x minus 2. So we need to find length. We'll factor this, right? We can factor this with difference of squares. See, this could be written as x square whole square minus 4 square, correct? So that is what you need to factor using difference of squares. So we get this as x square minus 4 times x square plus 4 and the denominator here is x minus 2. Now, x squared minus 4 can be further factored. So, you could write this as x plus 2 times x minus 2. And the term which is not factorable is x squared plus 4 divided by x minus 2. Now, you can simplify by crossing x minus 2. So, you get this answer here as x plus 2 times x squared plus 4. So we have to find an expression for length. So that is the expression for length. You may leave it at this stage, but this is simple to expand also. So in that case, I'll advise you to expand this. We get x cubed plus 4x plus 2x squared plus 8, right? Now rearrange this to write your final answer, which is the length is equal to x cubed plus 2x squared plus 4x plus 8, right? So that becomes our answer. Now the units are not given here. Sometimes the units are also given. You need to include the units, right? So we have answer and that is length is equal to x cubed plus 2x squared plus 4x plus 8. Question number 5 now. The base of a triangle is 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 divided by x squared minus x minus 12 and the height is x squared minus x minus 2 divided by 2x squared minus 5x plus 2. Find the area in the simplest form, state any restrictions. So, so in this case, area of a triangle is what? It is half of base times height. So we could write this area as half of so say base of the triangle is 2x square plus 5x minus 3 over x square minus x minus 12 times height, which is this expression, x square minus x minus 2 over 2x square minus 5x plus 2, correct? So now we need to factor this. 
so that the common terms can be uh, simplified. Now, to factor, let's do these terms separately. So, we'll factor uh, 2x square plus 5x minus 3. We're looking for a product of minus 6, sum of 5. So, we could write this as uh, uh, 6 and 5, you can get with 3 and 2, right? Uh, sorry, because this is minus and that is plus. So, 6 and 1 will work, right? So, we have to write this as plus 6x minus x minus 3. We can take 2x common and we get, um, sorry, square. So, we get x plus 3. We can take minus common to get x plus 3. And so, it can be factored as x plus 3 times 2x minus 1, correct? Uh, the other term is with uh, 2x square minus 5. We'll do this one also which is uh, 2x square minus 5x plus 2. So 4 is the product, sum is minus 5, both can be taken as negative. So we get 2x square minus 4x minus x plus 2. Common 2x, we get x minus 2 and minus x minus 2. So we get x minus 2 times 2x minus 1, right? So we have factored them separately. Now we'll write them in the expression and calculate. So 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 can be written as um, x plus 3 times 2x minus 1. This product of minus 12 and sum of minus 1, 4 and 3, 4 will be negative, right? x square product of minus 2, sum of minus 1, 2 times 1, 2 negative. This we did here, we get x minus 2 times 2x minus 1. Now cancel the terms which are common. Correct? So we have 2x minus 1 also getting cancelled. And x plus 3 is also getting cancelled. Okay, so what we get here is in the numerator we have x plus 1, in the denominator we have 2 times x minus 4, correct? So that becomes the area of the triangle in unit square, let me write. Right, that's the area. And now let's write down the state restrictions. We need to write restrictions. So x is not equal to what? So start with the uh, original one. So x cannot be 4 minus 3. It cannot be 2 and half. Correct? So these are the four restrictions which we have to write. So I hope this is absolutely clear. Right? Let's take up the next question which is uh, one of the most interesting questions in this test paper. The question here is state two rational expressions in factored form with integer coefficients simplifies to 3x minus 1 x minus 5 as a product the restrictions x is not equal to 5 which is there not equal to minus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4 and 0 unique numerators and denominators that means we do should not write just common terms here and we have to write two rational expressions right so that is important sometimes you may just write one and lose half the marks right so first thing is we have to write two expressions now let us try to understand how do we incorporate these restrictions now these restrictions imply what let me write down the factor so we need a factor x minus 5 we need a factor which should be 3x plus 1 and for this we need a factor which is 4x plus 1 and for this we need a factor which is 0 correct I mean x right so these are the factors which should be there in your expression so let me write down the first one so let's write down the first expression right so the first expression I'm writing as we need 3x minus 1 okay so uh, <clears throat> we'll write like this 3x minus 1 in the numerator and in the denominator we have all these terms x minus 5 times 
3x plus 1 times 4x plus 1 and let's multiply this with x so we have incorporated all these restrictions but see these three terms are in addition right so we have to write a numerator also so basically we have to somehow cancel these three terms correct we have to cancel these three terms how could you do it that is the, the great question right so one way could be we can multiply this x with with that or with this right so so the alternate method is we will multiply first with 3x plus 1 here and this x with this term so we get 4x squared plus x now note it says unique numerator and denominators none are same now we have written this as same do you see that so that doesn't really work out therefore we'll write this expression not as this this is not our answer but you see 3x minus 1 times 3x plus 1 is difference of squares so we can write this as 9x squared minus 1 do you see that times 4x squared plus x over all this which is x times x minus 5 times 3x plus 1 times 4x plus 1 does it make sense to you correct so that becomes one of our solutions now we have to write two right so let's write down the second one so for the second one i'm not going to do major variation i'll just take few terms from here write them on the numerator side so i'll write this as now x times will maintain 9x squared minus 1 times we'll write this as 4x plus 1 in the numerator this has finally to cancel out right and in the denominator we'll have x minus 5 times 3x plus 1 times i'll write this as 4x squared plus x does it make sense to you so these two rational functions they will simplify to 3x minus 1 over x minus 5 and both of them will have the required restrictions is this part clear to you perfect so i hope this is absolutely clear feel free to write your comment share your views and with that we come to an end of this excellent test paper and i hope that really helps so if you have questions write them in comments thanks for your time and all the best